it's uh, we mentioned this end of January right now, which is probably the thick of or the tail end of cold and flu season. Uh, maybe not so much in San Diego where we're at here, but uh, for a lot of us in the the northern two thirds of of mm -hmm. the country, how do we how do we keep our immune system boosted so we can either prevent or combat it if we come down with something like that? Keeping your immune system highly active and and in an appropriate way is important for for prevention of cold or flu and other diseases as well. Sure. The first thing people should consider for immune system function is by getting plenty of sleep. So even before you start looking at pills and teas to take, make sure you're getting enough sleep. That's, that's a no-brainer. Even an extra hour or two of sleep a night for those who aren't eating, sleeping five or six hours can make a difference in proper immune function. With, with respect to herbs, there are a number of herbs that have shown uh, beneficial effects on the immune system. One of the ones that has not yet gotten very popular over here in the United States, but is more popular in Europe, particularly in Sweden, is an herb called Andrographis, A-N-D-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-I-S, Andrographis. Nothing to do with the term andro, which was f formerly popular as a steroid and sold in bodybuilding uh, products and stuff like that. This is not about that at all. There's no, no re relation. Andrographis is an herb that grows in China, Southeast Asia, et cetera. It's a very bitter leaf. Uh, and uh, there's extracts being made from andrographis that actually increase the ability to treat upper respiratory tract infection. I believe there have been seven or eight clinical trials of relatively modest size uh, that have been meta-analyzed. In other words, they take all the trials and put them together and, look at, and pool all the statistical data and look at and see uh, what kind of evidence-based medicine type of conclusions you can have, not just from one big trial or one small trial, but from a cluster of trials that meet certain inclusion criteria, randomized, controlled, placebo control, et cetera. So uh, there's one Swedish extract of andrographis that has been meta-analyzed and shown that it can be useful in reducing the, the duration and severity of upper respiratory tract infections if you get a cold as a treatment at the very first symptoms. Presumably, uh, you might be able to take it on an ongoing basis to prevent that, but I don't think there's any prevention studies on andrographis. I'm not sure of that. Echinacea, of course, is the one that people think of first on colds. Uh, over the last 10 or so years, there's been some equivocal and in some cases some disappointing literature that's come out that's gotten a lot of profile because the media loves to report on negative trials, and they seldom report on positive trials uh, on echinacea. So there's been some... Uh, Ne high-profile negative trials, especially back in 2004 or 5, when they used about one-third the dose on what was then the largest echinacea trial, some 500 or so people, I believe, and they found that the echinacea didn't prevent, uh, echinacea preparation that they used uh, in the trial, that didn't prevent uh, colds or flu in virally induced cold. They actually uh, induced it with viruses, I believe. But when you take one-third of an aspirin and you wonder why you, you don't get relief from your headache, should you take one-third of the dose of echinacea and expect to be able to uh, help prevent a cold or flu? So there's, there's often challenges uh, with some of these trials with respect to their methodology. However, in September of 2013, I believe it was, the largest trial in echinacea ever published, ever conducted, I believe, 745 people, if I remember correctly, showed a uh, prevention of cold and flu effect on people, and it wasn't virally induced. It was actually people who you know, who either did or didn't get a cold or flu based on a, pop, a, fairly, a relatively large population of 745 people getting placebo or a Swiss-made echinacea extract that contained both the root and the leaf extract of ep echinacea purpurea, the purple coneflower. So there's good news on echinacea uh, recently in the largest trial ever showing that at least that one product and whether other products are going to be able to have the same effect is always one of the questions with herbs, because not all herbal products are the same. Mm -hmm. But at least with that one product uh, made in Switzerland, uh, the echinacea was uh, successful in actually reducing uh, cold or flu from a prevention perspective. So those are two great herbs that uh, uh, I, I always keep in my uh, kitchen, not my medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. I keep in my kitchen. And uh, if I ever get a sore throat or that first tickle that could lead to the sore throat or that, that beginning of the sniffles. That's when you take it. And I take you know, this stuff every three or four hours. I take it with large amounts of vitamin C. I use garlic and I throw uh, you know, I just almost everything in the, with the kitchen sink, so to speak, into this herbal knockout formula. And I 
you know, usually, and this only happens every two or three years with me, I get one cold or beginning of the flu. Well, I'm not sure what it was because I've been lucky. It doesn't progress, and so I don't know if it was cold or flu. I just knock it out. And usually within 24 to 36 hours, I'm uh, asymptomatic by using primarily andrographis and echinacea.